Earlier this week, it was announced that the Delaware Blue Hens will be joining the Conference USA and transitioning to the FBS level. While some may think this is not major news, I want to explain why this is a major move by one of the biggest schools in the Northeast. This is huge for the Conference USA and Delaware. Let me explain. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I am planning to release a video every day from now until Christmas. Also, let me know what your favorite realignment move has been in the comment section below. Delaware began playing football in 1889, where it would find on and off success until the arrival of Bill Murray in the 1940s. When Murray arrived, the Fightin' Blue Hens were playing at the Division II level, and under him, they went 49-16-2, winning the 1946 Division II national title. Murray would be named the head coach of Duke in 1950 and was replaced by David M. Nelson. Nelson brought the wing tee offense to Delaware, an offense they would run for 50 years, following his arrival and introduced the winged helmets, which was developed at Michigan and Princeton under Nelson's mentor, Fritz Chrysler. Nelson played for Chrysler when Chrysler was the head coach at Michigan, and Nelson brought the helmet design with him to every team he coached. Nelson remained head coach until 1965, compiling an 84-42-2 record, winning the Division II national title in 1963 over Kent State in their bowl game. In 1966, Harold Tubby Raymond took over as head coach after serving as an assistant on the staff, an assistant on the baseball team, and he would become the face of the Blue Hens football program for nearly 36 seasons. Things did not start off great for Raymond in his second season as they finished the year with a 2-7 record, but he would then proceed to lead Delaware on a dominant run. He perfected the wing tee offense, racking up 300 wins to only 119 losses and 3 ties. He led the Blue Hens to 14 Lambert Cup trophies as the best team in the East in a particular division, 4 national semifinals, and 3 national championships in 1971, 1972, and 1979. His 300 wins accounted for nearly half of the football victories in school history. These three men, Murray, Nelson, and Raymond, are all enshrined in the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia Tech is the only other school to place three consecutive coaches into the College Football Hall of Fame. Throughout his career, he led Delaware to wins over Navy, Maryland, Rutgers, and Temple, putting together 60 wins over teams played at a higher level than them. There were always talks about Delaware moving up to the FBS level, joining the FCS in 1980 via Division II football. Yet they continued to find a lot of success and profitability at the FCS level, which paired nicely with their highly respected university. Raymond would retire in 2001, and he was replaced by Casey Keeler, who continued the Blue Hens football success, leading them to the 2003 Division I AA national title with a 15-1 record in the quarterfinals the following year. In 2004, Keeler told American Football Monthly, we're the LSU, we're the Georgia, the Florida of Division I AA. We have every resource. There's some people who have better resources than we do, but in general, the college campus we have is one of the greatest college towns in America. And the academics, we led the nation last year in out-of-state applications, more than Michigan or Texas. But that's what this school has become. Everybody wants to come here. They routinely sold out their 22,000-seat stadium, making them one of the top-attended football schools at the FCS level. Delaware was the only FCS program to average more than 20,000 fans per regular season home game for each season from 1999 to 2010. The home attendance record was set in 1973 on October 27th against Temple University with 23,619 fans. And attendance has exceeded 22,000 fans frequently. On a game day, they are the fourth largest city in all of Delaware behind Wilmington, Dover, and Newark itself. Maine head coach Jack Cosgrove told Keeler that playing Delaware at Delaware Stadium is the highlight of many of his players' collegiate careers because of their large fan support. In 2007, Delaware made it back to the FCS national title game, losing to App State. They also had one of the longest streaks in all of college football to never lose eight games in a season, which was only matched by Michigan, Ohio State, and Tennessee, but they marked their 8th loss in the 2008 season a week after Michigan did the same. In 2010, Delaware made it back to the national title game with a 12-2 record, but lost to Eastern Washington to fall short once again. But after a 7-4 and 5-6 and season, Keeler was fired and replaced by Rutgers head coach Dave Brock. 
Keeler finished with an 86-52 and record, leading the Blue Hens to three conference titles and four FCS playoff appearances, making it to the title game three times and the quarterfinals once. Brock failed to find success at Delaware and was fired six games into the 2016 season, becoming the first coach to ever be fired midseason in Delaware football history and was replaced by Richmond head coach Danny Rocco. Rocco led Delaware back to the FCS playoffs for the first time since 2010 and 2018, where they lost to James Madison in the first round. In September of 2019, Delaware became the 39th team to record 700 wins in the NCAA when they beat Rhode Island. In 2020, they made it to the semifinals of the playoffs before losing to South Dakota State. Rocco put together a 31-23 record, but was fired after the 2021 season. Rocco was replaced by Ryan Cardi, a former Blue Hens quarterback who had coached at New Hampshire for 11 seasons and spent four years under Keeler as offensive coordinator at San Houston State, helping them win the 2020 FCS national title. Cardi led Delaware back to the playoffs in 2022, losing to eventual national title winners South Dakota State in the second round. This year, he has led Delaware to a 9-3 record, and they recently beat Lafayette in the first round of the playoffs, 36-34. They take on number 2 seed Montana in Missoula on Saturday at 9 p.m. Earlier this week, Yard Barker ranked Delaware the 10th greatest FCS program to ever play at the level, writing the Blue Hens' 25 playoff wins entering the 2023 season, ranks 5th all-time in the history of the subdivision. Delaware has also produced a host of players who enjoyed NFL success, most notably quarterback Rich Gannon and Joe Flacco and defensive back Mike Adams. Back in September, there were talks about Delaware upgrading facilities to help build infrastructure that sparked conversation about them possibly considering a move to the FBS level. It was estimated to be an $85 million project, and they were looking for funding. A lot of people who were being asked about building the facilities said they would give the program the money if they would move to the FBS level. There was also a driving factor with the CAA's addition in Campbell and Bryant who did not match the school's success in athletics nor their academics. With conference realignment going crazy the past few years, many felt the push to make the move seem likely now as they watched former rivals James Madison, App State, Old Dominion, and Georgia Southern all move up over the past decade. Talks about moving to the Conference USA, Sunbelt, or MAC started gaining traction. Back in 2022, Bennett Conlin named Delaware the sixth best team to find success early at the FBS level if they were to make the jump behind North and South Dakota State, Montana, Montana State, and Jackson State, who was coached by Deion Sanders at the time. Delaware Online's Kevin Tresolini wrote back in September it would certainly be a costly venture, with the addition of 22 scholarships plus other expenses. Title IX rules may also necessitate the addition of women's sports. Here comes ice hockey. For travel costs and academic mindedness, the MAC seemed like the best situation for Delaware. But earlier this week, it was announced they would be the first school paying the $5 million transition fee and would be joining the Conference USA for the 2025-2026 academic year. They plan to start making the transition in 2024, which means they will not be eligible for the FCS playoffs. The move has not been made official as of the time of recording, but many can expect it in the coming days. Delaware is one of the top universities in the Northeast, with many people from my area actually dreaming of and choosing to go there, and it is a massive move that many may not realize. This move will not just help the football program, but also will help the university as a whole. I could see them making a move to the American down the road. Cardi could get advice for the transition from his former mentor and soon-to-be conference rival to help take his program to the next level. Like I said earlier, Delaware plays Montana this Saturday at 9 p.m. on ESPN+. What do you think? Is this the right move for Delaware, and who will be the next team to transition? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.